Hey friends, welcome to Canadian Cutting Edge, and today we're taking a look at the Cancept Redis. This is a knife that's been out for a little while, and it's an interesting knife, and I got lots to say about it. Uh, some of the stuff is really, really good, and some of the stuff, eh, yeah. I don't really like this knife that much, but it's got an awful lot going for it. Maybe you'll like it. You want to see why? Keep watching. Those of you who are waiting for my knife sale to come up, uh, my, yeah, need to raise loads of money knife sale, I don't know yet. Uh, the insurance company still hasn't told me how much I'm going to have to pay back for my disability pension. And uh, until then, I'm not going to decide which knives I want to sell just in case I get good news. You know, I don't want to sell off knives that I want to keep uh, if I don't have to. I'm, I'm going to have to sell off some. I'm, I'm Well, I'm convinced they're going to ask for it quite a bit. So we'll see. Anyhow. I'll let you guys know. Keep watching my channel. I'll probably say something about it on like every other video or maybe every video until that gets figured out. Uh, we'll see. And then I'll give you guys notice. I'll tell you beforehand. I'll, I'll publish a video saying what day the knife sale is going to start. And that day I'm going to send out a video as well about the knife sale to make it harder for you guys to miss it because I know some of you are asking. But the Redis. This is the budget version, not the uh, higher priced version. So we're going to take a look at it right now. So here's the knife. Do you see anything strange about this knife? Well, you can't see the blade or anything yet, and yet this is one of the things that disappointed me the most. The G10, it's red over here and this dull pink over here. And it's not just this slab, this one's the same way. Red on the end and all pink near the pivot. Will somebody like that? Probably. Is that intentional by Cancept? I doubt it. I think this was just a mistake. I think they had a slab of G10 and they didn't want to not use it, so they used it, and it's got that... I think it's ugly. I think the color, the G10 here, is ugly. And the thing is, if I dyed this, it's probably still going to be a different color here than it is here, because it started off as a different color, so I'd have to dye it something really, really dark in order to get it to be acceptable, I think. Of course, I could have sent the knife back and got a different one. Uh, that would inc incur more costs for me here in Canada, uh, but I guess that's possible. Yeah. Um, but there's some good stuff about this knife too. Let's go. The, I'll do my favorite thing about it, and then I'll talk about the price, and then finish the, re, or then do more of the review. Excuse me, I had to sneeze there. One of my favorite things about this knife is how smooth the action is. Look at that. I didn't have to shake it. Didn't have to throw it up and down. Uh, just gravity wants to close it. You know, it doesn't close super fast, but it wants to go closed. Good detent holding it closed, you know, good lockup blade place. The action on this thing is really good. All right, I said price. Uh, the price on this thing, $69 American. At White Mountain Knives, you can save 10% with our coupon code CCE for Canadian Cutting Edge. Uh, that doesn't get me anything. That just, get, just gets you a discount. I don't get a kickback. I don't get any money out of the deal or anything. But you get 10% off if you use coupon code CCE when you shop there. That makes it $63, $62.99 US. In Canada, you're paying $100 for this Canadian. Uh, if you're buying it at White Mountain Knives with a discount, that would equal about 86 Canadian. So you're paying $15, $16 more in Canada for this knife in Canadian dollars. You know, that's just the way it goes most of the time. Sometimes you can get knives at par or whatever, but uh, usually you're paying a premium. And so that's what that is. So if you're in Canada, bladescanada.com is the place that I would suggest to go get this. That's in uh, British Columbia. Uh, you might find local stores. Go ahead, shop at your local store. Support your local knife store if you uh, if you can and if they're a good knife store. So that's that's a good thing. The knife. It's called the Redis. Uh, what's the name? Dimitris Osarenko. I'm 
sure I butchered his name. That's this sort of DO logo here. The name of the knife is the Reedus, and that's right there on the blade as well. Uh, and there's the Cansep logo there. There's the model number for this red one, T1041A2. And 154CM, it's written right there for the blade. You can get it in this really nice stone wash finish, which I'm really happy for. Or you can get it uh, titanium nitride coating on it. You can get it that way as well. That's a black blackish coating. I prefer stone wash, so that's what I got. Uh, they call it a straight back blade. It's wider here than it is here, so it's not quite a straight back blade. It's not a harpoon blade. It's a straight back, sure. Let's call it a straight back blade. That's what Cansep calls it. It's probably what uh, Demetrius called it as well. Dimitri called it as well. We've got a straight, mostly straightish blade. There's a little bit of a belly here, but straight blade and it maintains its thickness all the way up to here. And then it looks a bit like a Scandi grind just for the tip and this front belly. Very thick. It's a whole full millimeter thick at the end here. Uh, 40 thousandths of an inch thick just behind that uh, apex grind. A little bit less here, more like 23 uh, thousandths of an inch down here. So a little bit thicker than I prefer, but not bad. So. This might be the only knife that I, not the only, one of the only knives that I would recommend for somebody who is going to do prying with their knife, even if they shouldn't. If you're that person, you know if you are, this kind of knife is decent for that. Now, this isn't a good, you know, puncturing kind of knife. It's okay for slicing and cutting. It's not great for either of those either, maybe because it's a little bit thicker than I'd prefer it to be. But yeah, this belly... It's made for getting underneath something and you can't get far underneath it before it starts getting really thick. So it sort of is a prying surface. Yeah. If you want to do a lot of prying, get a pry bar. You can get small ones. You can get six, eight inch ones. You can get shorter four inch ones, whatever. Uh, made out of steel that's proper, or some kind of metal that's proper and good for that. Blade steel. I tend not to prefer it for prying because you're going to chip that edge eventually. Maybe not the first time you do it. Maybe not the tenth time you do it. Maybe not the hundredth time you do it. But you're going to you're gonna wreck a blade eventually. A lot of guys break the tips off their blades. I've had a number of blades in you know, for sharpening uh, when I was running my Canadian cutting edge sharpening business, which I've had to put on hold as well. Uh, and uh, watch one of my... I'll put a link up here for this, the video about why I had to stop that. Um, yeah, it's okay. Decent steel, well made. I like the stone wash. We got thumb stud for deployment or look at that elongated hole right there. Put your finger in there and deploy the blade. My index finger, middle finger from the back works just fine for that. Thumb stud works just fine. Even in the left hand works just fine. The pocket clip is right side only though. So if you're left-handed and you want a pocket clip on the left side, you're not going to get that. So we're talking about the handle now. Let's get onto the handle. We've got that pocket clip. It ends coming up. It's not the most comfortable pocket clip in the hand, but it's not bad. Uh, we've got T6 button screws and still it comes out further than I think it should need to. Uh, let's demonstrate that right now goes in and see there's lots of room up there so they could have made it you know a bit thinner this way if it'll focus up here a bit thinner this way would have been just fine for most denim unless you've got some really thick denim uh, yeah I've got a pair of jeans where the pocket has a little bit of this faux leather that lines uh, that lines this area right here and this one does okay in there. So even though those are button screws, it's there's enough space in there for that. And I knocked one of my lights over. Let's put that back. There we go. So that's okay. We've got those beehive shaped thumb studs. Like I talked about the thumb studs a second ago. Pocket clip. Handle scales. We've got, what do we got? Eight little milled sections. Three, three, and then two up there. They're not all the same dimensions, different sizes, but that helps with the grip a little bit. And we've got the texture on the G10 there as well. Not a problem. No lanyard hole. But as we'll see when we do a teardown, there is a different lanyard option. Uh, we've got G10 backspacer right here, just a small backspacer. T6 screws that are inset. 
which I don't like, and I'm not going to go over why again in another video. I've said that enough times. Yeah, there you go. Big stop pin right here. And Well, not super big. It's a decent sized stop pin, and it works. And like I said, no blade play or anything. The lock up here, quite good. I'm quite happy with that lock up. Uh, easy to get your thumb in there to disengage the lock, even though I'm not sure how abrupt that transition is going to be because the battery died on my phone. Uh, but here we go. Let's talk about the lockup. Lockup's good. You can get your hand behind here, even though they've rounded this edge. Get in there, disengage the lock, and start to close the knife. And like I showed, it wants to close. Just really well done. I'm happy with that. Uh, solid. Well done. Handle, comfortable. Not bad. We've got this cool section up here. It's not really a forward choil, but you know, if you usually grip it right where the handle scales are, and it is more comfortable in the left hand than the right. And I've talked about that in other videos because it's wider on the left side than it is on this side. And so just the way your anatomy works, it's more comfortable in left hand. So lefties, yes, there's some good stuff for you in most liner lock knives and frame lock knives. They're just more made to be more comfortable in the left hand. But this section right here, this flat section, it's full width support. You can get your finger up here and still have your thumb up here. You know, like I, there's no G10, there's no G10, there's no jimping up here. But you can get your hand up there and still get decent. You can even reach forward if you've got your index finger way up there, not comfortably. Maybe if your hands are a little bit bigger than mine, mine are just barely in the extra large range. That's not comfortable. That was okay. I would have liked some jimping. Not a big deal. Decent, decent. Uh, before I talk about all the dimensions, weights, and all that stuff, let's tear this thing apart. Okay, so I've taken it all apart. You can see there's lots of skeletonizing on this knife. Uh, the liners are well made. We've got a stop pin right here, and the stop pin is just a replacement for one of these. So if you strip out these screws, well, you'll strip out the screw, but if you damage the threads in the pin, you could swap those around. I guess if you wanted to, and uh, they just, they, they fit each other. Uh, we've got the backspacer here is the backspacer comes off. You've got little shoulders on here, which means, yes, if you are a lanyard person, you can put this knife together and assemble it, and it'll be sturdy because it clicks into place right like that. Of course, this goes on top, and it can't be squeezed together anymore, so you could tie a lanyard off right there. And I suggest that pin right there, not this one, to tie a lanyard off so the lanyard can't come around towards the cutting edges easy. So, yeah, if you like like lanyards, there you go, you can do that. Um, the detent ball, nicely well set, good ball. The bearings here, they've got 10 ball bearings in here. The industry standard is still 9 for budget pocket knives, so 10 is better. Uh, decent smooth action, not sure what material, what kind of plastic that is that the cage but uh, 10 ceramic ball bearings really nice round pivot pin yeah so you need two screwdrivers probably uh, to take it apart that's probably why uh, Dave had a little bit of a challenge doing this not a big deal the screw heads are still fine uh, and the screwdriver fits in there quite well they're not loose and wiggly at least not bad at all so there you go, that's how it's made. Uh, these screws here have had a little bit of blue Loctite put on them, but that's just fine. Uh, there's no thread locker on the uh, pivot screw itself, which is good, because if there would have been, that might have caused problems, but I think it was probably pretty tight. So there you go. I forgot to take close-up pictures of those parts, so you didn't see that in that part of the video, and I'm not gonna do it now, so. From the clay, from the teardown, there might not be any close-up pictures. And the measurements. The weight of this knife, 114 grams, 4.02 ounces. So it's a 4-ounce knife. Not bad for its size. The factory sharpness, I measured it in three or four places, not counting this front edge because that was a little less sharp. But the main cutting area, 210 best. Not bad. Uh, most of the knives I review are a little bit sharper than that, but still, this is not... Uh, dull by any stretch from the factory. 
the cutting edge length. So a straight line from the heel of the blade to the tip of the blade, that is 90.5 millimeters, 3.56 inches. But if you measure it from the tip of the blade to the closest spot on the G10, that's 88.8 .8 millimeters, 3.49 inches. So depending on how they measure in your jurisdiction, it's under a three and a half inch blade. The uh, blade thickness, so up here on the flat section, 3.43 millimeters, that's 0.135 of an inch. 0.125 is an eighth of an inch, so yeah, it's thicker than an eighth of an inch. Blade depth, of course, is widest right here, just at that tip, because this seems to be coming back a little bit. So right there, 26.9 millimeters, 1.06 inches. The thickness of the edge behind the grind in this main area here off the main bevel, 0.59 millimeters, 23 thousandths of an inch thin or thick. This section here starts at 23 thou and goes to 40 thou or 0.59 millimeters to 1.01 millimeters. That's just this edge thickness right where my thumbnail is, not this main sort of Scandi grind bevel, just from the apex grind. That's how thick it gets up there. Means that tip is really strong, but it's not very punctury. Um, I didn't do the grind angles because I've stopped doing that unless people start asking me to. A lot of people asking me to, not just one or so. Uh, the blah, 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 blah. The handle length. The handle length uh, measured, you know, if that being a straight back, the length that way, 112.9 millimeters, 4.44 inches. The grip area, 10 centimeters, 4 inches roughly. So that's not bad. The thickness of the G10 surface, so the screws stick out a little bit here. And of course, with the pocket clip and things, but on the G10, 12.68 millimeters, 0.499 of an inch. So half an inch, almost exactly thick this way. Uh, the handle depth this way. Uh, the widest point is, is I'm, I'm measuring it straight like this. So when you get to here, it starts coming down again. The widest point was right there, 25.4 millimeters, one inch. Again, right on the nose. And when the knife is closed, the widest point is up here, 28.8 millimeters, 1.13 inches. And the total length of this thing from tip to end, 202 millimeters, 7.95 inches. So just under eight inches. Yeah. What do I think of this knife? I wish I liked it more. I really wish I liked it more. It has its uses, but I'm just... It's not for me. I don't pry things with my knives, so I don't need a knife that's got that sort of super, super, super strong tip, uh, which you have to be thick to be super, super strong. I just don't use a knife that way. Some people might, and if you do, maybe this is the right knife for you. Uh, things I don't like other than that, it's basically, you know, the T6 screws. I don't like T6 screws, especially button screws that are recessed, just don't like that. And this G10 being red here and pink there, it's just ugly. In my books, it's just ugly. Now, did they intend that? No. So yours probably won't have that problem if you buy a red one. Um, and if it does and you don't like it, send it back. Uh, if it was all this red, which it looks like in the pictures they are, on oh, that, just a little mark from a pen, I just got it dirty, I'll clean that off afterwards it's it's a decent handle i just don't like the fact that this is pink at the pivot and red at the end why is that in hand comfort it's okay nothing special nothing terrible it's just in that middle range of good it's 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 decent we don't have a belly here so it's not great as a slicer or cutter but it's good it works. So you decide. Now the action on this thing is just awesome. If every knife that I bought had such good action, I would be one spoiled camper, that's for sure. It's better than the, it's in the top 5% of knives that I've reviewed. I've reviewed way over a thousand knives and it's in that top 5%, maybe even higher than that in terms of how smooth that action is. And there's no grinding, no grit. There's no, yeah going on at all. It's just beautiful. The tension on the pivot bar is just perfect. The lock bar, I mean, the, with the pivot on there, 
and it's just smooth and nice straight out of the box. Very happy with that. I did find a couple times with the heel sticking out, well, it doesn't really stick up, but with the heel right there and using it forward like this, I did do a tiny little cuts on my finger on both my right and left hand when I used it because I tend to pull forward a little bit like that and poke myself with that sharp edge. So there's that. And I didn't mention that before. I probably should have. But it's pretty decent. And if you like lanyards, just get rid of the backspacer and then you can tie a lanyard off that one and that would be just fine. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing structurally. There's, it's, you're not risking anything. It's just fine if you get rid of the backspacer. You just don't have hourglass shaped pins here. You've just got the straight pins just like there on the stop pin. So yeah. Do you have one of these? Do you have a Redis? Let me know what you think. It's disappointing. Cansep tends to charge just a little bit more for their knives. I expect just a little more quality and you don't get that with my G10. Like I said, yours might be just fine. And I suspect most of them will be just fine. I think this was a an anomaly that just got to me. And uh, because the pictures I see, I don't see any pictures of any with that issue. It just doesn't happen. If you like that loud clunk that you get from a super smooth knife, there you go. It, it clunks when it opens. If you like to annoy your partner, there you go. Play with this during uh, movie night or whatever at home and they'll be annoyed to no end. So you can do that. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching my video. Like I said, I will tell you about the knife sales when I can. And of course, my former supporters, uh, I've turned off support, but I still have you guys listed there. Uh, my supporters, I'll let you know when I do the knife sale. I'll give you advance notice and advance access to the sale by about two days, and then I'll open it up to the general public. What do you think? Let me know down below. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. <laughs>